Hey, welcome back to Fat Mama Physics. In this video, we are going to do circular motion examples. So in the, um, this one is not filled out, but um, there will be a file for you to find where this is filled out, or hopefully you have this filled out already. This video, we are going to look at horizontal circle examples for circular motion. So this is topic six in the uh, IB, IB syllabus, as well as your Tokos textbook. So let's get started with these, uh, with these examples first. So example one, I have some, uh, some stupid kids are screwing around in the playground, merry go round with a diameter of 1.8 meters. So um, I'm going to draw part of the merry go round here, and then I'm going to have a, a, some kids sitting over here. And the diameter of this one, which I'm only going to draw the radius um, because this is, imagine this is me cutting it in half, which half of 1.8 meters is 0.9 meters. Okay, and uh, it takes 1.2 seconds for this kid to uh, make one full trip around the circle, which means this number here in seconds is going to tell us the period of the of the rotation. What is the angular speed of this kid? So we're going to start off with A. So angular speed, which we use omega to show angular speed. This is the, uh, the radians covered over the amount of time that it was used to cover that amount. So for example, if this kid made one complete circle around, then the number of radians, we will use not degrees, we'll use radians. If that's 360 degrees, for radians, that is two pi. So he covered one exact circle, two pi, in how long? In 1.2 seconds. So the time that it took him to cover that is the, the time. Okay, so then we put this one into our calculator, 2 times pi divided by 1.2. That's going to give us 5.235, 5.235, and then that's going to round up to 2 sig figs, which is 5.2. So the units of this one, the top is in radians, so we use rads, radians, over seconds, seconds on the bottom. Okay, awesome. Next up, we have the tangential speed of this kid. So when we talk about angular speed, imagine I have a pen that's rotating around in this circle. Every point along the arm of this pen has the same tangent, has the same angular speed because it's covering the same radians per second, okay? But if you take a look at my pen, notice the outer tip of my pen is going to be moving more. It, mo it covers more distance per unit of time compared to some somewhere that's closer to the center of my pen. So that is the tangential speed. So if I had to draw this merry-go-round like this, the tangential speed would be a lot higher at the edges compared to somewhere near the middle. And to find the tangential speed, we can use the angular speed for that. The, ra the relationship is tangential speed is your angular speed times the radius or how far away you are from the middle. Of course, the further away you're from the middle, the higher your tangential speed. Okay, so why is it tan tangential speed? What's a tangent? It is tangent to the rotation of the circle. So that's uh, 90 degrees to the rotational arm here. So that's why it's called tangent. Okay, so let's calculate the uh, tangential speed for the kid and assuming he's sitting right at the edge of the merry-go-round. So that would be his uh, omega, which I'm going to use my non-rounded value, 5.2359.8, uh, and multiplied by the radius of where he would be sitting at. That's roughly about the uh, 0.9 meter mark away from the center. So 5.235 uh, dot 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 r rads per second okay and I'm gonna take that and multiply by 0 0.9 meters which is the radius from the center of the circle okay and that's gonna give me so that's times 0 0.9 4 4.712 dot 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 meters per seconds and round it up to two sig figs 4.7 meters per seconds and don't need a, don't need directions for this one because this is just 
him uh, and the same going around anywhere in the circle. Oh, and it's speed. There you go. Okay. C, what is the centripetal acceleration? So the relationship between your tangential speed and your centripetal acceleration is V squared over the radius. Okay. And that's going to give you your centripetal acceleration, which we got 4.71 uh, using the non-rounded values, okay, uh, this one's squared divided by the radius, which where the person is sitting, so that's also 0.9 meters away from the center, 0.9 meters away from the center, squared divided by 0.9, that's going to give us 24.67, rounded up to 2 sig figs, 25, okay, and the, cellar centri the centripetal acceleration is always directed towards the center of the circle, so if it's asking for that, then it's uh, kind of assumed that the, direct, uh, the acceleration is in that direction. Okay, last but not least, the force this 74 kilogram kid must apply against the rails of this merry-go-round so he does not fly away. So to answer this question D, this kid is going around in a circle. If he does go around in a circle, he will have an acceler a centripetal acceleration directed towards the center of the circle as he is moving around. So to apply a force that will allow him to have that acceleration to be, which means going around in a circle, we have to look at the Newton's second law. The net force is equal to his centripetal acceleration times the mass. Oopsies. So that's uh, ma but his A is going to be the centripetal acceleration towards the center of the circle. So we have to look at all the forces acting along that line. So again, good to draw a free body diagram. The free body diagram will look like this. You, we would have his uh, force due to gravity acting on him. There will be a normal force acting on the bottom of the seat. But notice that, uh, look at these guys, He's, uh, they're holding onto the railings and then uh, notice they're trying to sit where a T-shaped uh, by the railings are. So there's, um, there's a bit of a force that is pushing against them to hold them to go to make sure that they stay in the circle. So there's actually also a, uh, we could call this a normal force because um, there is a surface here, technically speaking, and whatever force they apply to this railing, the railing is going to apply an equal and opposite force on them. So we can just lump some that into one force, the normal force, that this uh, that is going to uh, be applied onto this kid. So technically, the force that this kid must apply against the rails, um, that's also not not just what the not just the force that he is exerting it's also the railings uh, every part of this railings exerting on his back so essentially is all those horizontal forces directed towards the center of the circle and we're just going to lump some that into um, fn so this technically f net here would be fn going towards the center of the circle i can even label that x as x so we know it's in the uh, horizontal direction and that's going to be your F net. There is no other force acting on this person. His tendency of wanting to fly out has nothing to do with the force acting on him. The tendency of him wanting to fly out has to do with his inertia. Because if he's traveling, uh, his tangential speed at every point along the circle makes him want to move out of the circle. But because there's a force holding him inside the circle, he does not leave. So it's his inertia that makes him want to leave. It's not a force acting on him. So there is, please don't get this confused as another force acting on him in the, uh, the opposite direction of Fn. So there's no force. There's no force there, okay? Be very careful of that. So all we have to do here is take the centripetal acceleration, multiply by its mass, that's the amount of net force that needs to be applied on him to keep him to moving around the merry-go-round. And that's going to be the FN, or the force of the railings and everything applied on the kid. So his mass is 74 kilograms. His centripetal acceleration was 24 something, which then I'm going to use the non-rounded value. And that's going to give us... 1825, 1825, and that's going to round to two sig figs, 
eighteen hundred newtons. Okay, there you go. Okay, I noticed this video took a bit of time, so guess what? I'm just going to um, I'll make a new video for example two, and I guess I will do that as well for example three. Okay, so thank you for joining in with me for this example. Wish you good luck, and see you next time on Fab Mama Physics. Signing out.